The CU Podcast is proud to have this segment sponsored by Skillshare. That's right, and we in Skillshare would like to invite all of our listeners uh, to maybe make this the year to learn new skills, uh, deepen existing uh, hobbies, and get lost in creativity. See what's out there that you might be able to be surprised or inspired by. Skillshare is an online learning community offering thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Topics including illustration, design, photography, everything. With so much to explore and real projects to create, you get the support of the fellow creatives who are taking these online classes with you, and you get the support of the people who are teaching them. Um, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. They offer classes designed for real life, and basically what that means is that the all of the courses are broken down into easily digestible chunks so that if you need to you can sit down take it at your own pace learn a lot in one day take a few breaks if you need to and then get back to whatever it is you're doing I cannot stress enough how many different types of topics there are uh, just for people who listen to this podcast alone there are things such as pixel art master classes game soundtrack composition story writing for interactive formats all sorts of things that you might not think would be on a site like this I personally have enjoyed taking some of the cooking classes when I've had time. Um, it's a great way to refresh yourself on a technique that you may think you know or you've always wanted to learn. You can find something for it on there. Skillshare is affordable. It's less than $10 a month for a subscription. Get out there and, and start learning. To join Skillshare now and take the next step in your creative journey, click on the link below for two free months of premium access. Limited run over the weekend. Uh, a couple of... Uh, companies uh did uh game stuff this weekend limited run had their showcase and devolver digital did a showcase they did their wacky one devolver as digital. well uh the devolver sh the devolver showcase i didn't see all of but there are definitely games coming out that i'm interested in from the devolver showcase and i need to play did you see what devolver did they put out a free-to-play game. It's a full game, first person, where you actually go through like the remnants of an expo hall, and there's like, there's like, oh, brilliant. There's setups for like the games that they're talking so about. So stuff like and you can through. walk. Yeah. So okay, it's I, it's I like it's like an it, yeah. It's a game, but it's also like a fake expo. Um, and then Limited Run um, announced a bunch of things that they are putting out this year uh, physically. Um, quickly, I think some of the things that uh, got people pretty excited were like uh, the Castlevania collection, which came out originally last year, right? which came out last year is getting a the anniversary collection, a uh, a physical a physical run but the uh thing that i think i am most interested in um and honestly i surprised this is another game that definitely is in my uh that was a fun topic last week when we did the games that deserve another chance it was uh, an oddly like nice uh commentary pool as well because people are like oh they're not shitting on games they're talking about games that we should give another chance i would like to give shantae another chance oh okay i'm going. going with that yeah i think i'm going somewhere um so, yeah, Shantae is the original game for the Game Boy Color, I believe, was released in... Well, I think it's 2002, and even that sounds late I'll look it up Late right to now. me, but yeah, please please look. I think it really was about that late. Because you know I know a lot about Game oh, Boy yeah, Color Oh, no, yeah, here games. it is. Yeah, uh, the, the producers of physical media talk about re-releasing 2002's Shantae. So yeah. Shantae was originally on the Game Boy Color. It was a very, very, very late release for the system. Um, it was well-reviewed. It immediately became a very expensive game. Um, just a loose cartridge of Shantae alone right now, I would say, is I've always... Uh, the, the price in my head has always been 300 300 300 because that's what it was forever but i think it's actually closer to four or five hundred now oh, it's a, it's just for right a now. loose cartridge um there's lots of repros on yes there. tons of repros we've had uh, precisely one uh actual one come through the store in my time being oh really there. yeah one. yeah and i, I mean i kind of wanted it but i didn't enjoy the shantae that i had played later can so, i even find a real one the last last two that sold on ebay both in april a week apart buy it now for 650 and 500 dollars just for the cartridge yeah. holy crap if you look at historically complete, complete copies go for a, a couple thousand i think it, it's the uh, i i don't think it's holy exaggerating shit. to say it's the rarest game boy it's the game. magical chase of the game boy color we'll just say it's 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 rare and it's coveted it hits both so um it's this is where you know companies like this uh can do a lot of good we are getting an official re-release of the game a reprint on cartridge a reprint so now everyone who wants it will be able to, to get it 
Well, not a bootleg. They'll get a not nice a version. It'll be it'll be an official, nicely done, not a crappy copy. AliExpress version. Um, that said, it's also going to be ported to the Switch. And from what I hear, the bonus material, the bonus stuff that you would get in the original Game Boy Color game by playing it on a Game Boy Advance, um, is going to be in the Switch version as well. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so that's going to be cool. And what makes that neat is once they do that, uh, they are also porting Risky's Revenge to the Switch. So um, w by the end of the year, uh, you'll be able to play the entire Shantae series on the Switch from beginning to end. That's pretty cool. Um, I like it when that starts to happen with these long-running series. Um, I think on the PS4, you can play basically every... You can play every mainline entry in Resident Evil on a PS4. I like it when that happens, when things work out like that. So that's pretty neat. Um, this isn't the first Game Boy game they've done, Limited Run. I, uh, I, I, it, I, it's, they did... Um, they did the Star Wars Game Boy game, I believe. Yeah, Star Wars and Empire Strikes Back, Back I believe. Yeah. Um, but this may be the first Game Boy Color game. Yeah, so, they, so Limited Run the past, uh, what, two, three years? They, they, do, they do their own little online little video, cheeky, cheesy thing. It's great with all the green screen. They do, like, the cutout mm -hmm. audience. It's, it's great. It's, it's great. Because this is what you need nowadays. Uh, and they live stream it, and it got tons of people watching it. You, you don't need you don't need to go to E3 to show off your you know your games like this. You just do you know no. you a little production. Have fun. Do it your way. Yeah. Get your message across. I mean, companies like Limited Run and you know the aforementioned uh, Devolver Digital always seem to have a very good time doing this stuff. So yeah. And it resonates with the people who are watching it. They don't yeah. feel like they're watching a bunch of you know stuffy bullshit that they don't need to watch. You, you get people up there like the bad <laughs> actors on stage to play the game, and they're reading. You can tell they're getting fed. Keanu Reeves lines. is a good actor, but yes. No, I'm talking about when they get like yeah, the models no, I, on stage to play the game. Yeah. They don't do that as much, but even like three, four, five years ago, they get people, wow, this is fun. It's like, come on, man. Come on. You, you hire them off the street. You know, these these models here. Okay, so do we have a price on the on the Shantae re-release yet? Not that I saw on here. Um, this is what the interview with the funny uh, from this article was said. Um, oh, I just I just had it. I, I, what happened to the article? I, I just had it. Oh, here it is. Um... I just had the. I totally lost the interview. Here it is. Okay, uh, when Josh Josh uh, Fairhurst from Limited, Limited Run Games said, "Our pal Josh, I'm excited to reveal it, reveal it. You'll no longer have to pay four hundred dollars for an official Shantae cartridge on the Game Boy Color." He was actually understating the price at the time of this writing. Original cart can sell for over five hundred dollars. Oh, okay, yeah. With, with box copies selling in the thousands, this re-release will allow so many fans of the series to legally play the game in this beloved series. And I think we, we sometimes understate what that means to people. And it's like people say, oh, why well, just buy the, the, the cheap repro? Some people feel weird about that. You probably know some people, like, eh, it's like, eh, yeah, I feel weird. When we get an official, you get, you know, they're gonna put probably cool little little extras in it, little feelies, you know what have, you're gonna have the little manual they're gonna do. It's just different to have it on there. If, right. If you, if you really love the series, and you're a fan of the series, mm -hmm. you don't wanna get some knockoff game that, you know, might short circuit in a week. You know what I mean? There's crappy, crappy colors, what have you. Right. So, there you go. All right, is this something... Do you like this, the, the, the game enough that you would look into getting this? Well, that's run? what I was saying at the beginning. This is actually a series that I feel like I need to go back and try. I think the only one I've ever played was Risky's Revenge, and I did not like it. Uh, I did not think it... I, I loved the art, and I loved the music. I did not feel like the level design was very good at all, which was kind of a problem I had with Way Forward games at the time. You're trying to come around and wait for it in the past I have. I, I, I have. You, you've, the, done, you've done a 360 or 180. Yeah. In, in the past couple of years, a lot of the stuff they've put out, I've, I've really enjoyed. Um, but yes, I, I would, you know, the Shantae series is something that I should enjoy. It's bubbly. It's cute. It's colorful. It's 2D. It's platforming. It's a Metroidvania. There's yeah, no yeah, reason yeah. I shouldn't like it. So purple, I should probably try it again. Purple hair girl showing her midriff. It's got, a, got it all. <laughs> She's a real cutie. <laughs> So, I'm not going to say how much this is going to cost, but it looks like the Star Wars Game Boy went for uh, $40. That was on the blister, you know, they did the blister, they did the blister pack stuff. Yeah. I, I can see this maybe being in that sort of, in that area of cost, $40 to $50 for a Game Boy game. They usually digital. try to keep their releases really fairly reasonable. I think, I don't think I've seen a standard release they've done be more than 50 they're for the people, right? Now, here's the question. And those are usually ones with lots of DLC included. The 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 twenty thousand dollar question, which is what the contra cost, which shouldn't cost that much, sealed. Will this affect 
the old game's value after it comes out. Um, Ding. I don't... <sighs> I don't think it's necessarily going to change its value. I think it's going to change the, the amount value. of... I don't think it's going to change the amount of... I, I do think it will change the amount of people looking to buy it, if that makes sense. Because a lot of people are going to go, oh, okay, this is good enough. I have it physically. Well, that affects the value, though. Right. I, well, in, what I'm saying is, is I feel like people who really give a shit, people who really care about rarity, yes, I still feel like something that rare, like that original copy of Shantae, is probably still going to go for... It's probably still going to trade there's hands. There's enough collectors that will still it, want it. It'll trade hands for three to $400 still at the end of the day, but the market that gives a shit about it is going to be significantly less because there's a cheaper other option that other people are going to see is just as authentic. Well, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying that it caused it directly. But when the NES Classic and SNES Classic came out, that was during the time of the prices going down in all those games. It didn't help. Those games did not go up at all for for certain. They went down, um, and obviously prices trickled up the past what four months because we're in we're in 2020 is like the fucking Twilight Zone year where nothing matters anymore and rules don't apply. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know how many people want to spend four hundred dollars to play this legally anyway in, in, in the first place if you look at price charting on this this game was a res was reasonable when i say reasonable like 250 280 range up until it looks like it jumped up the real jump up started happening fall of 2018 so like two years ago it really started going up is that when the, the new games came out is that what happened about i that? mean that might have been when one of the new games came out but i mean the shantae games have been coming out I think Risky's Revenge, which was the sequel, I think that came out in like 2008, 2009. Because for 10 years, it's been a game that went for close to $200. Yeah. It went down, actually went down to 150 in like 2012. I'm looking at price charging. It was a $200 game for like six, seven years, and then it slowly came up to 300 the past three years. So like that's stable. Now it's exploded for double the cost the past year. And, the, and actually the peak looked like, the, the peak was actually looked like March of last year, according to price charting. It was the, the average was five ninety four. Now it looks like the average is five hundred, unless they didn't take into account that six hundred and fifty dollar one. Then, I, or or I, can, or I can go conspiracy and say those were never completed auctions, and they're and they're milking the system. And, this, and who knows? Like that, like I said, that can happen. We talk about that as a, as a podcast topic. How uh, we don't know if this stuff's actually being paid for in price charges and still including the prices, right? The values of them. So, all right. But either, hey, if you're a fan, I, I've never played any game in the series. Ian, you think I like it? You think, you think I, I enjoy it? Yeah, you might. I might. It seems like it'd be up your alley. Okay. I. I, I all right. Well, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't own any limited run games. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. <laughs> I should dive on in and support support the pals there that we know and love.